Welcome to Listen and Learn. My name is John Radford. I'm an English teacher from the United States. If I won the lottery, I would buy a huge house. I would have passed the driving test if I had known what the yield sign was. Many of our deepest wishes are subject to external conditions that need to be met for us to achieve our objectives. In fact, there's a term for this in English. It's called conditional sentences. Did you know that in English, we have four basic types of conditionals? They're called the zero conditional, the first conditional, the second conditional, and the third conditional. That sounds like a lot. Let's see how far we can get, and maybe we'll have some fun along the way. Okay, so let's start with zero conditionals. Zero conditionals, as a matter of fact, don't have anything to do with dreams or wishes. What they describe are scientific facts or universal truths. For example, if I heat ice, it melts. Notice there are two clauses. There's the conditional clause at the beginning, if I heat ice, and the result, it melts. Notice that they're both in the present. Zero conditionals are always structured this way. The if clause is in the present, and the result is in the present. If it rains, the ground gets wet. Next in line are first conditionals. In this case, we're not talking about universal truths or scientific facts. We're talking about something that has a very real probability of happening. If I study hard, I will pass my exams. Again, we have two clauses. The first is the conditional clause, if I study hard, and the second is the probable result. I will pass my exams. In the first conditional, the conditional clause is in the present, if I study hard, and the resulting clause is in the future. I will pass my exams. So let's move on to the second conditional. The second conditional describes imaginary or hypothetical situations, situations that are not likely to occur. For example, if I won the lottery, I would buy a big house. Notice there are two clauses. The first is, if I won the lottery, that clause, the if clause, is in the past tense. I would buy a big house. The result clause is in the conditional tense. So that's how the second conditional is formed past tense for the if clause, and conditional tense for the result clause. So, we've talked about zero conditional, first conditional, and second conditional. Now is as good a time as any to tell you that we can switch the if clause and the result clause so that the result clause comes first and the if clause comes second without any change in meaning. For example, in the zero conditional, if I heat ice, it melts. Or you can switch the clauses and put the result First, ice melts if I heat it. Likewise, with the first conditional, if I study hard, I will pass my exams. You can switch those clauses and put the result first. I will pass my exams if I study hard. And with the second conditional, we can also switch the clauses. If I won the lottery, I would buy a huge house. I would buy a huge house if I won the lottery. So let's talk about the third conditional. The third conditional is the only conditional type where we talk about the past. Now, what happened in the past but what would have happened in the past if other conditions had occurred. If I had known what a yield sign was, I wouldn't have crashed my car. If it had been raining, I would have taken the bus. If you had asked me, I would have told you. So in the third conditional, like the other conditional forms, we have two clauses. We have the if clause and we have the result. But in the third conditional, the if clause, if I had known, if it had been raining, if you had told me, those are in the past perfect. The result, is in the conditional past. As with the rest of the conditional types, the clauses in the third conditional sentences can be reversed. No matter what order you use them, remember to keep the right grammatical form for both parts and you'll be all right. So there you have it, the four types of conditional sentences, their usage and their corresponding grammar forms. With conditional sentences, you'll be able to talk about scientific or logical facts, potential, imaginary, or hypothetical situations, and even your deepest regrets. Now go out there and start using them. Oh, and if you want to get more exclusive English tips, subscribe to our channel and click the like button. And send me a message if there's a topic you'd like us to cover.